Okay, if I can have your attention here, we have a guest speaker today, which will be an education for the teams who are not going to be working with this client, but it's a real benefit to the team that is actually going to work with this client. Goya Media, this is one of the two partners in Goya Media. She and her husband run Goya Media. This is Lynn. And what's your husband's name? Alan. Alan. Lynn and Alan. He uh, has a background in signage, she just told me about. She worked 20 years for a sign printing company, and now is a photographer. They work together. He's mostly the writer. Mm -hmm. And she can tell you a little bit about herself, her background, um, her business, what she's done, who her clients are, what she, why she took on this, and just anything else she wants to take. As I, as she wants to say, as I, as I mentioned, uh, until she gets either exhausted or 15 minutes comes up. And then the team will have a chance to ask questions. This is pretty similar to the way a client, initial client meeting is. The client gets a chance to start things out, and the design team wants to know exactly the answers to what they know about. And they won't ask every question. I'll try to fill in questions they don't ask. And even then, every question will not be answered, which is why the open communication is going to work with the client. Like, oh, by the way, I need this and this. And so it's very important that uh, some advice to the client as well as to the team that you can get back with each other in 36 hours, you know, a day and a half. Eight hours would be great. Uh, in five minutes would be really super, but so that they don't have to wait around for a long time for information because the, sometimes information you know holds you up, right? Particularly if you're in publicity business, right? That's right. Okay, so I'll turn the time over to Lynn and she can uh, pick it from there. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is a wonderful opportunity for me, and I really look forward to working with the students. It's exciting to work with students um, and you know share what I've learned over the years. My background is I'm a, I was a freelance writer for 20 years, probably more than 20 years. I've written for publications like USA Today and Audubon and Cooking Light and other national publications. Um, the last 20 years, I've been primarily writing about Las Vegas. I covered the entertainment and food and dining and the environment um, for national publications and almost every local publication. And so uh, my, as a writer, you also do publicity a lot of times. And so I, my background for the last 20 years is I've been a writer and doing public relations on the side. And with this recession and the changes in the uh, writing industry, I really wanted to flip from doing writing and publicity on the side to doing public relations as my main goal and then doing writing on the side. A lot of, a lot of my clients right now are content management, which is the new field for writing, which is when you go to, on a website and you look at all the blogs and somebody's doing social media and telling everybody what's happening with that client's uh, website, that's called content management. We're doing a lot more of that. Um, and also working with nonprofits to do grant writing and some of their collateral material as well. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. Um, and I haven't had a chance to really get my own, uh, you know, website collateral and that stuff together. I, have, I put together my lingoya.com writing website quite a few years ago. It's out of date and I don't really love it, but don't really even like it. But um, I never did get the Goya Media website up. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had the, the domain name so long that I've lost it. So, um, you know, that's one of the issues. Somebody else bought the, the GoyaMedia.com name when I didn't read it up fast enough. So, um, right now I have a business card. And I should have had it in my hand right now. I have a business card, and that's about it. Yeah, so I'll pass around. I think I brought enough for everybody if you guys want one. So this is what, this is what I use as my marketing. And so I'm pretty much open for suggestions. Uh, there is, are quite a few local media companies in town, some very big, some very established. Um, the market has changed quite a bit over the past five years, but there's some very well-established uh, marketing companies. I think what I have that other marketing companies don't have quite as well is I have a really good relationship with uh, editors across the country. Um, so I feel like my media outreach and my media um, pitching is really higher than most other media companies. How do you pitch the media? Well, you write, you write a press release. People think 
that you you know you have a business you write a press release you send it out to this email list and then everybody you know jumps at the chance to write <laughs> about you that's if you have a fabulous you know if you're uh, Elton John and you're coming to town that's true but if you're a regular small business mostly that's not newsworthy and so what you have to do to pitch is find just like I have for, for 20 years as a freelance writer for every publication you get your generic story and you make it specific for that publication so you call the editor you have a specific unique story in mind that fits back with the press release that you use as collateral material and you talk to them and you know get them excited about your story and and your idea on how to cover it so you make sure you have the right reporter you know what their angles are what they like to write about you match that with your client and you pitch a unique story for that publication and then you get covered would you say your long-standing relationship with the editors give you a slight advantage definitely yeah because they'll take my call okay yeah. you know I can call the AP and they'll take my call and then I can talk to them as a friend, you know, what have you been doing this week and that kind of stuff. You establish, establish a personal relationship with editors as well as clients. And um, over time, you know, they'll at least listen to you. And if you are good at your job and know how to, you know, say for City Life, how that story would be different than Luxury Las Vegas when you have the same press release and the same client, but you can pitch different stories to them, then you're likely to get picked up more often. So you need to know a lot of audiences, don't you? You really target every every publication is unique and every business is unique. And so that's, I think, what my company does better. Probably because I've done pitched, you know, individual publications for 20 years, that's really my forte, not just writing a public relations piece, but making sure that I do the outreach that goes with it that gets stories. The hook. It's the hook, yeah. In advertising, they call it the unique selling proposition. Mm -hmm. And I'm not an advertising company. I, I really have not done that. So, so are you, are you full time now doing this? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to expand? I need to hire somebody. And who would they work for? Since this is a one-on-one. -on -one they would work for Goya Media. What, what I'm a, saying is, a, a this is a one-on-one -on -one business because you mentioned oh. you have to build relationships in that. But what, there's a lot of things that don't, uh, of course, over, you can teach the person that you hire how to do that and build their own relationships through the company, but there's also a lot of little things that need to be done that um, prohibit me which, from actually doing the one-on-one -on -one outreach. Which is the next question. What resources or tools do you see would help you lay groundwork or follow up with clients to help you enhance the one-on-one -on -one work that you're doing to gain new clients? Repeat that question. Well, <laughs> would a brochure help you? Uh, social oh. media, what, what tools do you see would help you um, stimulate the effort you're doing to get new work, other than just cold calling, making new contacts, right. make, you know? Uh, a website would be great. You know, I don't have it. I don't do the Facebook page for myself. You know, I really don't Twitter for myself. Um, if I had ch a chance to set up a blog where I could talk about, you know, marketing, public relations, and some of the things that we do, signage, all those kind of things that we have expertise in, I think that would help. Um, but that would depend. You know, content management takes a lot of time. So I don't know that I would want to devote that much effort into making my own website a national, you know, nationally recognized site, but um, having something that has information on it, I think would be helpful. Right now, people can't look me up, really. I mean, they look up and they don't know what to look at because my background is so diverse. That's another of my problems, I think, um, is my background is so diverse, it's very hard to pinpoint who I am for clients for new clients. Do you have a, a, a specific um, area that you would like to focus your business in, or, or do you want to stay, you know, doing what you're doing? Well, part of my problem is that I find a lot of things interesting, and so, you know, 
I haven't been as focused as some other you know, writers and businesses, but I do think I'd like to uh, focus on the content management okay. side. I think that's a growing field and not many people do it well. Okay. Um, I think there's going to be a growing market for that, so I'd like to focus more on the content management and then the media outreach mm -hmm. and helping people. Um, you know, part of media outreach might be event planning. You know, that's part of it. Now, would you want to handle the event yeah. planning as well, or are you looking more on the, just the collateral side? Of it? Would I like, for clients, would I like to, uh, ha yeah, yeah, I would like to do the events as well. Right, because a lot of times they're hand in, you know, hand in glove with the outreach that you want to get. You know, sometimes you have, you can't just, again, going back to a small business, just because you're there isn't right. newsworthy. So you have to figure out something that makes you newsworthy, that right. merits a press release, that merits somebody, you know, what any any editor asks, you know, not only what is the story, but why now? Mm -hmm. So there has to be some reason why, you have to answer the why now, as opposed to why can I write about you in six months? You know, I have other things coming up. So the why now often, depends on some kind of an event, not necessarily a big, you know, events can be a lot of different things. They don't necessarily have to be like a big party or something. Mm -hmm. Is that just promoting the events or organizing the events? It, it, you want to be a part of the organizing of the event because, you know, how, what the event is supposed to accomplish is part of the outreach. Which would include advertising for the event? providing that mm -hmm. and probably hiring somebody to do that for you since your forte is not in design, is that correct? No, my forte is not in design. And Alan's isn't either actually, even though he's a photographer, um, we're not designers. So no, I, I contract a lot of um, my support. I have an Emmy nomination for television production, but I'm not a videographer or an editor. So I hire that out when I you know, when I meet a client that needs video production. So, um, you know, you talked about promotional materials as a partner I work with that provides promotional materials. So we can say that we provide that through Goya Media, but I wouldn't personally do that. Mm -hmm. But we could provide that to a client. Do you, uh, do you have a large group that you collaborate with, or are you do? I do. You know, over 20 years working, you know, I have somebody in almost every field. I know there's a few elephants in the room. Come on, guys, ask the questions. <laughs> Any questions over here? If you were doing it, if you were going to, if this, she were going to be your client, what would you want to know about her business? What has been some of your major setbacks in your business? As far as the Goya Media part, which is really what I think of the public relations, is I've, I've not focused on it as much this last, I've only started really focusing on it um, probably since the beginning of this year. And so uh, the two biggest hurdles I have is that, you know, I have never set up the, you know, because I've been a writer up until then, primarily as my main income has come from just writing. Um, so the two main hurdles that I've had this year is I don't, I haven't set up the collateral material. You know, I don't have a website or really anything. Everything I, when people look me up, they see the writer, which is fine, except that doesn't address why they should hire me for public relations. And, um, and just being able to, uh, you know, I really need to get just a little bit bigger so that I can hire somebody full time. Right now I need somebody part time and I need to address that, but I haven't had a chance to even, you know, like get the job description written because, you know, just trying to keep up with day-to-day -day business is, is um, been a hurdle. I have, you know, three, client, three people that want proposals from me and it's just been really hard to get it done because, you know, doing, just trying to keep the business going and satisfy the clients I have limits how much time you have for the marketing and outreach. So in addition to publicity, press releases, uh, and uh, event planning, what other activities in the public relations area are you wanting to uh, promote that you do? Well, and I'm, my husband is a, an award-winning photographer. You can go to um, GoyaPhotography.com and see his work. He has 
you know, 20 years of Nevada photographs that are um, brilliant. And one of the things we think we should be able to be doing is selling more of his photographs, both for, um, you know, to architects and artists and businesses, but also, you know, to use in, in publications. Uh, you know, he's been printed in uh, Better Homes and Gardens and via Nevada Magazine. And, you know, so he has a good portfolio. We'd like to use the portfolio more successfully and, and get more revenue from that. So one of your strengths would be that you're good with words and images. Creating, okay. Um, a quick question that I have is, is the butterfly on your business card your actual logo? Kind of at this point, yeah. I've been kind of using that butterfly over and over. Um, and the, the font I use for Goya Media with it being down. Um, so that's kind of, at this point, that's my logo. That is a Nevada butterfly. That was from the grape taken at the Great Basin National Park, which is a Nevada park. I, I want to emphasize that we are Nevada based and have a really deep infrastructure of knowledge about Nevada, both the small towns and rural communities and, and um, you know, Vegas. I covered Vegas, up the entertainment for Vegas and food for, you know, a, a long time. Um, so I think that we are Nevada, that these images are from Nevada, people are looking for Nevada information because we are, uh, you know, an interesting state. Uh, I think that that's a marketing point. So yeah, that was taken at Strawberry Creek a couple of years ago um, in the spring when we went out camping there at Great Basin National Park. Would you want your logo to be your redesign? I'm not, my concern about the butterfly, I love it, is that it might be too, fem it might seem too feminine so I'm not sure if that's a plus or a minus. That's, I'm concerned about that. Well, there's some symbology in there that uh, it come out, bring your colors developing, transitioning from you know a worm, basically, a caterpillar to a chrysalis. And a, but it is the feminine symbol. You have to kind of look at that. Um, you don't have much to work with as far as the base of what you have for your imagery so it makes it a lot easier for any proposal to start from scratch or to change it in that. Mm -hmm. A lot of clients, they're really, because of personal reasons, sentimentality, want to stick with something that may not be best. And so any proposal from the team to change that mm -hmm. and to establish a different brand, uh, it would be part of that presentation to convince the client why it's in her best interest to change to whatever you're proposing to change it to, okay? But yeah. these are good questions. They're, yeah. They're looking at what you currently have to sure. represent visually who you are and questioning that, which is a good thing to do. If we stay with the butterfly, um, I thought maybe it needs to become a graphic, you know, line, outline, that because sometimes for printing costs, it, it's nice to not have full color, like the butterfly. So something I can use that looks good without the um, full color print might be something to consider. Um, the other image I use a lot is Alan took some great pictures of, um, uh, I just forgot the name of it, down towards Laughlin, the, uh, the mountains down, Spirit Mountain, um, a couple springs ago. It, they went out camping, um, it, was all, it snowed, was all foggy, and they had spring wildflowers, so it's an incredible series of images with the you know, southern Nevada mountains covered in fog with wildflowers scattered around. So I use that for um, a, a header for my stationery. And again, you know, maybe we need something more consistent because those are really two different images. Do you currently have a uh, bartering system with any of the uh, companies that you collaborate with, like an exchange of Sometimes, services? yeah, that, it might come up. Okay. Yeah, I, we've done trades. Is it, can you name like t two or three of the top uh, companies that you bartered with or have bartered with? No. Okay. I have to think about it a little bit. I haven't done it recently, but um, I have, definitely have. Okay. Do you know the top three outlets you have for making new contacts? I am working with a partner who does the promotional. Um, 
sells promotional materials, and she has been doing some pretty aggressive outreach and bringing me in. We, I have an appointment tomorrow with a lawyer um, that does trademarking who might who has clients that need uh, public relations and marketing, and so we're meeting with him to set up, set up a relationship with him so that he could uh, you know, transfer some of his clients to us and provide that service. And um, that's about it right now. Well, and then some other, my contacts that I, like I said, I have a couple proposals that I need to get out, so clients that I've worked with in the past. So what additional outlets do you see that you're not doing that you could do? Do you attend meetings or organization meetings I haven't had to time meet new people lately. I do but I just haven't had time and I don't have time to follow up so it's, it hasn't been productive as, as it should be because you have to follow up is that something you're interested in doing if you had if it was profitable if I yeah if I can get just a little bit more income so I can hire somebody to cover some of my bases then I could do more outreach so that that's I mean that's really one of my priorities is to be able to get somebody part-time next month or two because they can you know you can tell them you know we can learn how to do some of the twittering and the social media that's that's critical to content management um, you know even some of the posting once the things are edited and a lot of the you know just structural stuff um, and when I'm on the grant writing um, stuff that I'm doing that also you know a lot of the research and all the prep materials a lot of I can use some help doing those kind of and that way I can do more of the high-level marketing and outreach. What is your vision for your company? Where do you see yourself ultimately five years down the road? Where do you want to be? In the, or where do you want to grow the company to? I think that content management is a, a really growing field. People are more and more realizing that you can't just uh, steal somebody else's content and have that the, uh, lend credibility to your business. So attracting, and there's a, a huge, unfortunately, there's a huge group of, of excellent writers who need work. So if I could grow the content management business, I think that would benefit a lot of people, including the companies that we do that for. So I think that would be uh, a priority. And then on the side, being able to help small businesses you know, with their basic media outreach. There's ways to do it pretty inexpensively for businesses so that they don't have to spend, you know, five to $10,000 a month, which is what the larger media companies charge. And you don't necessarily need all those things, right? If you're a big company making a lot of money, it makes sense, but, you know, for a small company, they still need to have some media savvy, but they can do it in a much more cost-effective way. And I think that that's helpful because those are the people that need help. They're, you know, growing the local economy and, and I just read today that 50% of the uh, workforce now is freelance, which is kind of shocking. <laughs> the writing workforce? The writing, the writing industry? No. 50% of the U.S. workforce is now freelance contract, right, contract workers. So that's, you know, people need, they still need help. Anything that your team's going to recommend you is going to cost you, either in time or money. <clears throat> so if they don't go off the charts and recommending things <clears throat> and keep it reasonable, what are you willing to uh, set up? It's kind of like a budget, either the time that you could allocate to whatever they recommend per week that you could contribute to it, or kind of a, a, a money amount that you're willing to spend. Obviously, this is just a proposal, and they just this is just an idea for them to work with some boundaries. But I think I've asked you to kind of consider that, and if you have anything, you've got a handle on that right now, at least a range of, of what you're willing to do to pay for the uh, the execution of any of their recommendations. Um, I, I, you know, have to pencil it out like you guys do, but it would seem like 500 to 1,000, um, you know, to get the website up and, um, you know, get the design for what I would want if I want, if I do want to print brochures. If, if that seems to make sense when we really walk through the procedure. You know, right now I use the business cards for my primary brochure, and I'm, it's not that unaffected. So, you know, I want to 
think about whether I need some print collateral or maybe just one sheets or maybe just the website and the business. You know, that would be part of what we would think through. And as far as time-wise, um, you know, I'm willing to meet with you guys weekly if you have stuff to go over. And of course, by email and telephone. If you personally or anyone in your company were going to do one thing next month to gain a new client, what would it be? To gain a new client? I, I think my priority is getting some kind of website up because I, I do need to be able to refer people to something other than the uh, writing website. Um, I'm not sure that I want to keep the writing website up since I'm not really focusing on freelance writing anymore. Um, and I, I'm already doing that. I'm already setting appointments with potential new clients, so I'm probably at capacity right there. Any other questions? You mentioned that your business cards were effective for you as a uh, marketing tool. What, what's your average response rate on that? And then how often are you passing out your business cards? I, I pass out a lot of business cards. I do go to meetings and events. Um, people remember the business card. They remember the butterfly, so that's another reason why we might want to keep it. Um, it's, it's unique and it does stand out. And it does say a little bit about um, personality, so I think that that also is a positive for the business card. Um, and on the response rate, I don't really pass it out to say, you know, if you need marketing, give me a call, typically, you know. Um, so I don't know that I have a response rate to that. I would do a presentation like I'm doing with you guys today before, um, you know, really talk about working with someone. You ever present before a group? Um, yeah, I have. What kind of groups? Uh, well, I also uh, ran for office a couple years ago. I was the Democratic uh, State Assembly nominee for my district, so we pre present for a lot of groups in those in that capacity. Um, I have quite a bit of speaking experience. I mean, for like, have you um, when you make a presentation to a client, a prospective oh, client, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. it might be a small group or just somebody across the desk. Do Usually, you yeah. do you have like a laptop that you use to make a presentation? I or? haven't used a laptop, but maybe the, actually. Would you be interested in some yes, sort of a way of presenting that way would. through some electronic media, either a mic? Right, I should have know, thought of that. A, a tablet or something like that. That would be helpful, actually. Yeah, something. You're exactly right, and I hadn't thought of that. So thank you. Um, yeah, usually when I do client presentations, it's to you know, one or two or three of the owners, or if you talk to a nonprofit, it's to the board. So, do you have an outline of the kind of presentation you would present? No, I can, haven't thought of that. Can I mean, you make one? Yeah, we can do that. Team, That's okay. a great idea. I hadn't thought of that. <clears throat> and I think you had a question. Well, I was just going to say, get a tablet for a presentation. Yeah, I mean, I have a tablet. I just I haven't used it for presentations, and I probably should. Do you have a 30 second elevator speech? Or if you do, can you present it to us now? Well, Goya Media is a local Nevada based uh, public relations company. Uh, we focus on Nevada and specialize on Nevada. We have experience in, um, in outreach, media outreach. If your business wants to grow and you want your neighborhood or your community to know about what you are doing, then you need to be able to. Um, have the materials that you need and the information you need to get out to your neighborhood. So when you're ready to expand your business and get new clients, then give us a call. I just want to confirm. Ooh, that was 31. There's a difference between marketing, advertising, and public relations. And really my expertise is in public relations because I'm a media person. Um, I have, um, you know, I've, I've done television, I've done plays, you know, we do, we do a lot of print and uh, national media, so that's my focus. Um, I have connections with marketing, with people that are more marketing people that I would bring into a team to a specific client presentation to um, address those issues. How much experience do you have with social media? 
quite a bit. But it's such a fast moving field that uh, I would not call myself an expert just because you can't keep up. Um, again, that's another reason why if you hire somebody, you can kind of expand. Right now, I focus on Twitter and Facebook because they're manageable. And um, I personally like Twitter because I think that it's a really good way to reach out to people quickly and easily and, and engage people beyond your own sphere. Facebook is more uh, limited because people have to know who you are, whereas on Twitter, you can just kind of respond to somebody else that you want to engage and, and, and you have a good potential for them engaging with you and following you from that. So um, with limited amount of resources, which most clients still do, I would just focus on those two. I know that there's lots of other social media tools and it would be great to be an expert in all of them, but that's full time just being an expert, let alone implementing those. Have you looked into a social media uh Hub, such as GitHub to manage all your social media content? That's one of the things I haven't um, gotten to. <laughs> Thanks for that tip over there. Yeah. No, no, I mean, it's, it's on my list. It's been on my list for a long time, but there are a number of hubs. Um, there's all these different tools, and um, just trying to keep up with the field is, you know, is very time consuming. You know, what now, six months ago, even, for content management, they wanted you know, content, the content they were really focusing on was 250 to 500 words. All of a sudden, the last, I don't know, four or five months, they're going, no, we want long form journalism again. Well, long form journalism is completely, you know, gone. So now you have to find real writers instead of people that can just regurgitate and churn. So, you know, all those things, um, it, it's such a fast moving field that just keeping up is a full time job if you don't do anything, <laughs> but keep up. So. That's we can go issue. on and on forever. We want to have some questions that um, the team can ask you later. You. And uh, But you can see that this is going to be a, an interesting and fun challenge, trying to come up with uh, a way of graphically uh, promoting a business who makes, uh, whose experience has been in using words. Of course, with your husband in photography, when you tie that together, there's a <coughs> real twist here. I think next week what we'll do, instead of just talking about advertising and marketing, and leaving public relations till later in the semester, like I normally schedule, is we'll talk about public relations next week so that you can distinguish the difference between them. I, uh, that was my undergraduate. I, I graduated in communications. My BA specialized in public relations and organizational communications. Didn't do anything with it. Interviewed all over the country with, for PR jobs. And, and all he said was, gee, you're perfect, Canada. We love your, except you don't have a lot of journalism experience, a lot of writing, okay? And so I finished second in about 12 different <laughs> places. So I took on to run a, a newspaper. And after four years, I got that out of my system. I didn't want to do public relations. And I stayed in publications on the line. There's a lot of similar uh, skills in public relations and in publications and marketing and in advertising. They just have different scopes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. But I want to thank you for coming, Lynn. And, um, we, you have two, at least two teams working with you, so it'll be interesting to see what they kind of come up with. And uh, some of them didn't ask questions, but they took really big notes. So they are curious and so Anyway, any parting questions that you're dying to get answered or anything else you want to say before we finish up here? No, I just really look forward to this experience and getting some input from you guys. I think that um, it will be a great partnership. I appreciate it. <laughs>